Welcome to the Peace Over Pain Podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Welcome to the Peace Over Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and I'm here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome, Dr. Reese. How are you today? Happy New Day, Joe. And I'm excited because November 5th, my first live event in three years. Wow. Gonna, ha gonna happen in Farmington at the Bridge Healing and Arts Center, November 5th. So if anyone is in the area, New England, Connecticut, come by November 5th. You got to reserve your seat so we know how much food because we are having a buffet. Great, great. And pour, then pour for free, of course. Pour for free. And people can find out more about this event either in the group or on peaceoverpain.com, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is November 5th, going to be live in Connecticut. I'm sure we'll talk about it more in the weeks to come about what you're going to be covering. Maybe we can go over the menu as you decide what it is, mm -hmm. but we'll have a good, yeah, good. Very excited for you, Kevin. I was at your last event and I thought it was great. I really did. Seems like so long ago, right? I know, but it was a good time. Hey, you know what? Maybe uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Maybe. Hey, yeah. Before we get started, I wanted to remind people that if you have any comments or questions for Dr. Reese, you can leave them in the comments box below the broadcast and we will get to them on the air today. So that's a good thing. And also we remind people to like, subscribe and share on all the different platforms. We are on YouTube. We are on Spotify. We are on Facebook, Instagram. You can follow Dr. Reese. You can follow the Peace Over Pain Clinic or you can even follow me if you want. So, <laughs> all right. So today... We, uh, we have a kind of a, you had kind of a busy week today, uh, this week, I would say, Kev, uh, a couple yeah. things happened. Tell us a little bit yeah. about, you know, I know last week we talked about, you had a, uh, a newspaper article that sort of caused a little controversy yeah. and then, um, yeah, front page of the East Hartford Gazette last week. And then this week. I was on the Fox 61 morning show. Right. And so the morning show is kind of a big deal. And, you know, they gave me three minutes. It's not a lot of time. And of course, the host has to move things along. He doesn't know how good the guest's going to be. So he kind of dominates, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just the way news is. But it was a great experience. And overall, I think the three minutes came out good. Good, good. Well, you know what? I have a clip of the show. So why don't we show the listeners and the, and the viewers uh, what went on on the interview and, and, you know, what you guys talked about. So here it is. Here is the interview from Fox 61. And 11 holistic health it's a term that offers some solutions to dealing with illness however for many who turn to alternative methods the answers often lead to more questions so we have somebody with the answers we say mm -hmm. hello uh, to the author of peace over pain we're going to talk about that in just a moment dr kevin reese with us pleasure uh, Thank nice you to see me. you and, and we were talking about your you know where you got the phd yeah, yeah. um but uh you got your start yeah in radio yeah kind of just down the street yeah in farmington hot 93.7 uh -huh. what what happened you were doing the, doing radio work and, and then uh, uh, a little pain came in yeah you know i was just living that unhealthy life and it caught up to me at mm -hmm. 28 years old i was you know put on heart monitors the whole mm -hmm. nine yards and that really? led me down the path that's yeah. i mean clearly at 28 that's a young yeah, age. Yeah, i mean yeah, was it was it yeah. bad food bad lifestyle it's, i mean looking back now it's it's everything holistic is everything mm -hmm. yeah define that for me Holi uh, i mean in terms of because i think holistic is one of those words that it gets thrown uh, around it, it does and and sometimes even incorrectly so so clear it up for us so at my clinic we're truly holistic that mm -hmm. means we take care of the nutrition we take care of the musculoskeletal mm -hmm. system 
and we take care of that onboard computer you have called a mind. So you got the mind and you got the health, but I'm, I'm surprised with the mus mm -hmm. uh, you say it. Musculoskeletal why system. He's a PhD, no, okay. Not. 200 what? bones. Right. Yeah. 700 muscles. Uh huh. We have a massive structure. So when you're treating, when you're helping people, yeah. what are you telling them to do in terms of that? Well, we do all three, but but the musculoskeletal system. What we do is, we take photos. And with the photos, we can see what's out of alignment huh. because your knees are supposed to be over your ankles and your hips are supposed to be over your knees right. and your shoulders are supposed to be over your hips and your ears are a marker to be over your shoulders. And if you get that straight line, you're looking pretty good. Very interesting. It is. Uh, the, yeah. the book is full of, uh, you know, obviously all three uh, topics, but also yeah. uh, including food, including uh, the poor four. Yeah. Uh, glutens, oil, fried, and fake. Yeah. I like that. Fake foods. We really don't throw that around too, too much. That's the poor four foods, and you don't want to eat it. it. It destroys the body, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. But no. these little changes will make a huge and, difference. And it's interesting because in terms of, of, of what you found in the 12 years since you had that heart scare, yeah. that it is, it, you know, it's easy just to say diet and exercise, but obviously uh, there's a lot more to there's it. There's a lot more. There's big science involved here. Nutritional science if you're nutritionally deficient, you can have up to 900 symptoms. Really? That's, I believe it. I believe it. Peace Over Pain is the book. Dr. Kevin Reese is the doctor uh, with lots of letters by his name, including the first three, which are the important ones. <laughs> PhD. So clearly he knows yeah. what he's talking about. Come a long way from radio, my friend. A long way from radio. <laughs> now we got the clinic and we're helping everyone who has chronic conditions. There you go. Nice to see you. Thank yeah. you for joining us Thank this you. morning. All right, let's turn to uh, back to uh, the main. All right, we don't need to see the weather. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it official, though, is, is the weather, right? Because that's like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's the news, because news is synonymous with a weather person. Right? Yes, and they threw you right in. Throw and, you know, it's good to go before the weather because people are looking forward to that. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you, gotta... you know, I, I had to sneak stuff in because he was moving along so fast. And, oh, yeah. you know... And he, you know, like when I was like, you know, 200 bones, 700 muscles, like I'm just sneaking that in. I'm trying to give some value somewhere. Right. And a I, little but, bit more than just the yeah, standard. But they, they always, every time I do media, they always want to talk, or at least in Connecticut, they always want to talk about how I used to be on the radio. And it's just a constant. I, I texted my old program director afterward and i said man i should be getting a check because i'm constantly promoting your radio station and i'm not even on your station <laughs> i i yeah. will i will correct one thing though he said that i had a heart scare 12 years ago and that's not true my heart scare was more like 15 years ago i remember when it was but i'll tell you i don't remember the exact year yeah, but it's, it has it's to like, be oh, before oh, 2009. Yeah, to yeah. 08. Yeah, 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 yeah. People, I've, I've officially been doing health as long as I was on professional radio. Right. It's 12 right. years and 12 years, but there's a two year, um, there's a two year overlap. Right. Because I started in 2010. And spent my last two years on the radio doing health behind the scenes. Right. So I guess so that can confuse some people as far as the timeline goes. Right, right, right. And it was, you know what I found interesting? I love those old pictures of you, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> <With it. laughs> people don't know how, how your hair used to look, right? Yeah. But uh, you are growing it out now. You're going to go, go, go full? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, this is, this is just the, uh, the Jufro. Okay, I got you. All right, so I thought that was a good interview, though, for the for the short time it was. Like you said, you snuck a lot of info in there in a short period of time. And, of course, he opened up with what we're going to talk about today, which is the word holistic. And I think this is kind of ins what inspired us to kind of make this the topic today, was that it is a term that gets thrown around a lot. Yeah. And it is a term that's misunderstood by people. And I think, you know, obviously the word holistic comes from whole. And, and that's where we got it. And I don't mean whole, like 
donut hole. I mean, eight W H O L E. Yeah. And, um, holistic so technic to li- holistic death technically should start with a W it should. And you know, it used to hmm. way back in the day, but they did, they did change it. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about that holistic. You kind of went over it in the interview, but it is a misunderstood term. It's a term that's completely ignored by some people in the medical industry, but obviously holistic, just by looking at it is it's an approach. So let's, let's talk about what the term holistic really, really means. Yeah. So it means the whole body. Most people Mm -hmm. would say mind, body, soul. Right. And, you know, we're redefining that at the peace over pain clinic by, like I said, in the interview, having the musculoskeletal system, which is the structure the vehicle. And then nutrition is the fuel that goes into that vehicle. And then you have the onboard computer, which ultimately controls the whole vehicle. Right. So I look at holistic from a vehicle perspective, just like a plane, a train, or an automobile. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people throw this word around, like we said, like I hear people all the time, like, yo, I'm taking this nutritional supplement. It's holistic. And what, yeah. So that what's doing for sense. your mind? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It, uh, natural maybe is the word you want to use, but not holistic. So people are using holistic as a, a slang word now. Well, yeah, because they've coined the term holistic medicine, right? So they think, oh, this is holistic medicine, but that's medicine. That's not, it's part of the overall. Or functional medicine is another one they use now. Right, right, right. Functional nutrition or holistic nutrition. My PhD is in holistic nutrition. Right. Doesn't make any sense. Holistic is the whole kit and caboodle and When I became trained in the musculoskeletal system, that's when I was really like, now I feel comfortable calling myself a holistic doctor. Right. Because before it was just the food and the mind. Right. And then I added in the musculoskeletal system. And most doctors don't have a clue about the entire body. So what we're doing is truly unique. It's truly, truly unique because the root causes are multiple. We did a whole show on that last week. And so when somebody comes to me and says, hey, I have this, what's causing it? I can give you any of the six that we did in the last episode, the six root causes right? It could be muscle dysfunction. It could be gut dysfunction. It it, it could be a nutritional deficiency, or it could be all three contributing. Right. And so this is what makes us truly unique is the therapeutic approach that we use in the 120 day program takes care of all three. Right. So it's like, why hustle and bustle with what it is when we can just go after all three, it's going to make you a better human anyway. Right. So let's go after all three and let's give you an upgrade, your body, your life, everything. And let, and whatever needs to be healed will be healed. Right. If you give it enough time, I think we've discussed this before. You didn't get this way overnight. And you're not going to heal overnight, but you will see progress little by little. And in some cases, it's certain parts of the healing are very quick, can happen within two weeks. Yeah. You start seeing differences. You may not be completely healed, right. but you start seeing differences. This is how I had to deal with it with my gut issues. Do you know what I mean? It's like, as long as I was seeing progress, and, and I can tell you today from where I was a year ago, two years ago, I would say I'm 60% better, 60 to 70% better. There's just a little bit more to go before I, 
I consider it completely holistically healed, but it wasn't until, I mean, you know me, I've been, you know, a diet kind of eating healthy and good for years, but it wasn't until I got the synergy of the three together, you know, because I, I, I could meditate. I've been meditating and doing positive thinking for years, but I was eating for for foods, I was eating pizza and I was eating chicken wings. Right. So so what it what good was you know was I wasn't really a holistic approach. Now, I wanted to just bring in another aspect of holistic. And I don't mean to cut you off, but and we never considered your musculoskeletal system with your no. gut issue. But then when we ran your P ray, we saw that you had a sway back. And, and it, it kind of makes, it makes sense. That yeah. Cause would, your yeah. sway back means your pelvis is forward. Right. And your guts right there. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I noticed that, you know, I don't want to get graphic here, but when I go to the bathroom, I do a different position now. Mm. I used to be all hunched over. I don't, I sit up straight and it makes a difference. Yeah. It makes a difference. It's like being in static back when you're doing the exercise static. Right, right. And we know sometimes static back can have that effect on you. It sure does. Uh, um, I'd like to bring in another aspect of holistic. And this is something that just came to me. You know, you talk about, when we talk about holistic, you're talking about holistic approach to this body, right? To mm -hmm. your body. What about holistic approach being to the world? So in other words, you're always talking about how you go hug trees, right? Mm -hmm. Now that wouldn't be really included in the three that we talked about, but it's an important part of being a part of the whole, isn't it? Because you're communing with nature. So you're not only bringing it in your body, but you're bringing the outside, the force, the universe as a part of the whole. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of deep. It's kind of esoteric. But I thought of that when you say you hug trees and I walk barefoot, you know what I mean? Specifically in the grass. And I do what is called earthing. Mm -hmm. And I eat the fruit from the trees that come in my garden. And I'm saying, well, that's part of holistic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's also part of being of, of a whole of a whole concept of healing because I know you're hugging trees is important. And you can hear, I'm sorry, my landscaper decided to come <laughs> this morning and uh, you know, I had to close up all the windows, but he's right outside the door now. And I apologize. Uh, I hope it's not interfering too so, much. So trees, I think that it is, you know, it's part of mindfulness. I think it's part of mindfulness. Yeah. In the 120 program, I in the course part, I I tell people about trees and whatnot, you know, and earthing and things like this. And so I would consider it yeah. part, part of the holistic body as well, because we're just part of the earth. Right, exactly. And if you're if you're talking about the whole, the whole goes beyond our body, right? Because yeah. as we know, we're all connected, right? To universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, we're all connected to each other. You know, even holistic healing could be showing kindness to another person, oh, right? Yeah. Showing kindness that to somebody you don't really know. Being kind to an animal. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's, I believe, you know, that's probably an aspect, you know, we want to talk about that doesn't really get brought into it that often. Right. You know, right. so maybe that could improve see, the definition of holistic health. Yeah. Because you do really part of healing is becoming one with not only one with yourself, but one with everything. Right. 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 You know, right. and that's what we're striving for. Absolutely. And, and what we're really striving for, I guess, like what, you know, Osho says is, you're always, you've always been one. You've always been whole and mm -hmm. one with the universe. What the thing is, you need to realize it. And that's self-realization. Yeah, we're all going to die and we're going to just go right back in. Right. Right and back in. And become part of the whole again. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know, you know it's, you know, it's, it's an amazing little system that we're in. 
It's an ecosystem, but we get caught up. We get caught up in our relationships and our families and our careers and mm -hmm. just our ego just overtakes everything. And we lose the sense of being whole. Right. Right. But re in reality is we were born that way. You oh, know, yeah. we were oh, yeah. born as one. And, and I think that's just the nature of the material world that well, separates us. I'm reminded of that all the time when I'm talking with coach Amber, because her uh -huh. little one, Tristan, right. Quite hyper and free. And he's always, you always hear him in the background running around and he's playing, he's making high pitched noises. And I, just, I, Amber, I ask Amber, you know, don't you wish you were that free? Right. You know, and, and the thing is, kids, we are, were, kids are free. We were until they go to kindergarten and they get messed up. True. So they start going to school. That's and, it. Yeah. And then and they, we, get, they get trained for the jungle that we call capitalism. And we were that way too. We were. And if only we could remember what it felt like, you know what I mean? But actually remember what it felt like to be that way and act that way. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, and, and it's been in the Bible and it's in every kind of philosophy, Nietzsche, Nietzsche said it too. The goal is to go back to innocence return to innocence and become a child because the child's imagination is the highest form of creation there is mm. like when you talk to a child and he says oh yeah i seen a red dragon with a and there was a purple cow over that they literally were seeing that mm. in their imagination so vividly that they believe it's real like you know how the kids have an imaginary friend yeah Right. Well, they were actually, I believe, seeing an imaginary friend in their mind, but it's so vivid that it feels real to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know, we, you know, we can go over creation and manifestation and all that, but that's one of the big tenets of it. You, you visualize it so strongly that it has no choice but to manifest itself into reality. But anyway, we're off topic a little bit. <laughs> I've seen... I've seen video of me being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. In your mind. I've seen that for 15 years. Right. Still right. hasn't happened yet. But yeah, but so what? I've you still it. run that through in your head, right? I've seen it. Yeah, because the power of imagination is what drives our reality. And um, nobody has a stronger imagination than a kid. Yeah, you know, nobody. So um, that's some food for thought. But anyway, um, to the topic of holistic health, we do have a few questions today. Did you get any uh, in the chat today? Not at this moment. Okay. So yeah. So um, you know, as far as this whole mind body thing goes, Kevin. Do you believe this is something that should be the holistic approach should be taught to young, you know, people when they are young? So in other words, if you could get, let's say, I don't want to say a child, but let's say a 12 year old when right before they hit puberty to start understanding these concepts, because let's be real, this is something you learned about when you're older, right? Mm -hmm. I learned about it when I was older. Most people don't learn about it when they're older. Isn't this something that if we could bring this to young people and, and make them understand the concept of the whole body, you know, the holistic approach that it's not just your food, it's not just your, uh, your mental state, and it, but there's so much more to it, you know? Uh, yeah. I, I think that would be a great service uh, yeah. to do. Absolutely. We'll have to get Sunlight Sunny on it. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. People, uh, people don't really know about that, but there is, uh, you, you do have a children's, uh, a children's kind of story out there, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. I, I mean, these are lessons that we need to teach our, our kids. You know, I stopped to get gas the other day. And 
saw a, a young dad walking his kid out and you know the kid had an orange soda drink and a candy bar and you know people they just don't know what they're what they're doing they don't understand the repercussions because right. it's it's not instant and that's why i call the poor for food a slow suicide yeah and it, and you know it's it's not only the poor for foods but like you said it's the sodas and the looking down at the phones like this you know yes. messing up our necks and sitting on the couch all crazy and playing video games hunched over and oh smoking. yeah i can There's imagine the posture that comes from video games right yeah and and if people knew that they wouldn't do i don't know that they wouldn't do it but you would see more people sitting differently yeah, you got to get them young because once they get into their 60s and 70s, it's hard to change mentally. Very hard to change. Even 40-year-olds don't change that easy. You know, a lot of times it takes something big, <clears throat> yeah. like a knock on the head, yeah, a wake-up call to get people to want to change. Right. <clears throat> Whereas when you're younger, I don't think you need that wake-up call. Right. You know? So, yeah, I know I agree. I think it's something that i mean you know i'd love to see it taught in schools but you know it, it, I, I don't think we'll ever see that happen but you know maybe some programs specifically designed for younger people we can bring up a generation that might be a little bit healthier right you know and you know <clears throat> i do believe there is a segment of society that has become more health conscious <clears throat> and even raising their kids that way. Um, but I believe they're only, like you say, focusing on the diet and the mindfulness aspect. Wouldn't you say that the one missing piece, if you were to say of all the definitions of holistic out there, the one thing they miss is the body alignment the, the alignment of the muscular cell skeletal yeah. system. Yeah. When I discovered it, it was uh, mind blowing. Well, me too. You know, I had gone to a chiropractor before uh, and, and gotten, you know, adjusted and moved around and, and that kind of stuff. And it, I knew it felt good, but I didn't realize, and the chiropractor didn't tell me how much of an impact it had on my overall health. You know, the fact that uh, I had these shoulder issues, I had the slumped shoulder, and like you say, the sway back, you know, the chiropractor never healed that The mm -hmm. chiropractor never fixed the sway back. He might've cracked me and put me in position, made me feel good for a few days, Yeah, but he never fixed the sway back. Oh. And, and, you know, yeah, you're right. To me, that was the missing, the missing piece right. as well. Right. And, um, you know, I think. If you want, we could show people a P-Ray, uh, but um, do we have a minute to show one? Uh, I don't know. Dep I think we got four or five questions came in. So, All right. Let, we could, let's get to the questions, but let's obviously we know uh, before we do the questions, we have to. Uh, we have quite a bit of P-Rays on peaceoverpain.com now. I mean, there's, I think there's almost 30 of them. Yeah, and people should take advantage of that. They're also right in the group, aren't they? Yeah, and Rain There's a and whole I folder have, of them. Yeah, we have three more. We got it. We do them on Tuesdays. We pre-record them on Tuesdays, and then they're up on the website by Wednesday. Right. And then we yeah. deliver them to the person because we do them free for anyone that wants one. And I know we've been teasing doing an N ray. It's almost um, like a little podcast. It is. Almost, it's a it's almost like a little ten minute podcast yeah yeah we'll, we'll deal with that i think it is important that we keep talking about that but let's get to uh let's get to the questions but before we do that have you read peace over pain yet this short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, and a video training 
with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. Just want to remind people that Peace Over Pain is available on Amazon.com or at peaceoverpain.com. Or if you join the Facebook group, the Peace Over Pain Clinic, uh, make sure you pick that up and get involved in what we're doing. Okay. All right. So let's get to the good old questions this week. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, oh boy. I love it when when the computer changes and re, you know refreshes. Yeah. Okay, this is from JL on IG, and here we go again. Why don't you promote sea moss? Doesn't it have ninety two minerals? Okay. Yeah. So I think this is the eternal question. We have answered this before, but go ahead. So. Water carries minerals. They're not a source of minerals. So that's a really important thing to understand. Minerals come from rocks and mountains and whatnot. Right. Right. And then it comes down into a river. It goes into the ocean, blah, blah, blah. Sea moss is part of water. So you don't really know what you're getting. And the companies aren't testing. It's just like broccoli, just like corn, just like carrots. They're going to grow it and they're going to sell it. Right. And so they're not lab testing it to see how much nutrients are actually in it. My second thing about sea moss would be they're promoting minerals. 92 minerals, not essential nutrients. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. Because what we do is 60 minerals, which are essential to the body. Essential means your body doesn't make it. So when you drink our 90 essential nutrients, that's 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two essential fatty acids that we take through capsule, gel caps. So when you have sea moss, you're getting a plethora of minerals Hopefully, you don't really know. That's the thing. And sea moss is a fad right now. And it's very prevalent, especially in the African American community or African in general. And you'll see that a lot of island folks, St. Mm -hmm. Lucia, Jamaica, etc. And it's a fad right now, just like coconut oil was 10 years ago right and in 10 years there'll be another one you know and this is how it goes with this is capitalism now i'm not saying that it won't help you Mm -hmm. because if someone's minerally deficient and they get on some sea moss they will more than likely see an improvement right because they were minerally deficient and now they're getting some right but when we put you on a protocol, you know what you're getting. And we're doing it clinically. So you're also on a diet protocol so that we can open up absorption in the stomach. Right. Our minerals, which are the base of our formula, come from mountains in Utah. Right. It's the actual source. And you can go on a tour. You can go on a tour there and you can see it yourself. It's, I think it's free. You just go on a right. tour, go to Utah, have fun. Look, this is prehistoric minerals. And that's the base of what's in our 90 essential nutrients. Right. Yeah. So CMOS is cool. It's better than nothing. Certainly. I don't know how much they charge for it, but you know, you, you, you're not getting your bang for your buck. Yeah. I think you brought up a very important point. And I think, uh, the fact that the sea moss is natural comes from the earth, but it is. And, and when they say 92 central minerals, 
the ideal sea moss, if it was perfect, perfectly grown, has 92 minerals, but you don't know what you're getting ha is perfectly grown. It's not lab tested. And I think that's the key. Our, the stuff we use is lab tested. It's mm -hmm. certified that this is exactly what it has in it. Right. Y yes. Theoretically, CMOS has 92 minerals in its ideal form. But let's be real. Are you getting the ideal form? You know, you don't know. And that's what I think is the most important part. Yeah, I it's think hit or miss. Get, and I think people get confused because we're we're talking about 90 essential nutrients and CMOS promotes 92 minerals. So the, the 90 thing is in there and they could say, oh, well, there's two more here. Right. No, you, you're not understanding nutrition. You know? Yeah, exactly right. Minerals aren't the whole the whole shebang. No, they're 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 the they're the biggest shebang. Right. But they're not the whole shebang. If you have a deficiency in vitamin B1, you can get congestive heart failure. Right. If you have a deficiency in essential fatty acids, like I do, and I'm working on, then, you know, your nails might get a little brittle or, mm -hmm. or, you know, you might have some skin things going on. You know, this is complicated stuff, man. Yeah. If you've taken years of studying. I, I you studied know, on people who studied for years and in, in fo on that Fox 61 interview, I, you know, again, I only had so much time, but at the end there, I snuck it in, you know, if you have nutritional deficiency, you can have up to 900 symptoms. That's complicated. There's some yeah. serious science involved. And until people go down the rabbit hole, and they do the science themselves. They're just not going to get it unless the other, the only other way is to surrender to someone like me and say, Hey, I trust you. Mm -hmm. What you say goes right. You got two choices, either and trust, trust me or someone like me or go do the research yourself and learn it yourself. And the, and the thing is you provide them the research. You can go to the website. You can go on, on the, group and there are videos there that explain a lot of this stuff yeah you know uh and you, you can just watch that and of course the book so yeah it's yeah go do and then maybe if you feel like you need somebody to help guide you then you go to dr reese but for me it was like one you know you were sending me this info and putting me in the direction and, and once i read it it's like well, this makes sense. Yeah, this just makes perfect logical sense to me. Yeah. So why not try it? Yeah. You know, and that's what it is. Yeah, it just it just makes sense. Okay, this is from Fractured Matrix on IG, and this is what causes what causes hip elevation and feet that face outward. Mm. Muscle dysfunction. Right. Seven hundred muscles in the body very complicated system muscles move bones and you know muscles can pretty much be broken down into left to right and front to back mm -hmm. so if you if you have a hip elevation you're looking at a, a left to right issue mm -hmm. you know bilateral so there could be a weak muscle there could be some compensation there because when one muscle isn't doing its job the other muscles jump in and, yeah. you know, it could be a tight muscle bringing the hip up. It could be a weak muscle bringing the, one, the other side down. As far as the averted feet, well, that's your hips. Right. Because no hips, no toes. <laughs> yeah, so the two related, if you have a hip elevation, yeah, yeah so, and then your feet would face outward. That makes sense. So the averted feet, we'll use my hand here as the femur and then we'll use my other hand as the acetabulum which is where it fits into the hip that's what the hip is it's a joint right it's a ball right so here's the pelvis here's the femur and it goes in now when the muscles are dysfunctional it can become too tight and it can twerk or torque i should say like this Ooh. And then that brings the whole leg out. 
And then before you know it, you got duck feet and you're waddling around with duck feet. Interestingly enough, our good friend, coach Kevin Wright mm -hmm. sent me a picture yesterday of um, Rick Ross, the rapper. Oh yeah. And he, he was in the photo. He had, he had duck foot posture. So just from talking with me, I guess, you know, coach, coach Wright is noticing. He's starting to notice what, once you get the, the musculoskeletal eyes, it's really hard to turn off. Mm -hmm. You start seeing everybody, you know, you know, right. so yeah, you know, so muscle dysfunction, which was one of the root causes that we talked about in our last episode. Yeah. Muscles yeah. move bones, right? Bones do not move without muscles. No, very, very true. Now, is there any certain occupation or certain type of sitting posture that would, I think that's what this person was looking for, that would make, would cause that to happen? Well, averted feet, averted feet typically go with an interior pelvic tilt, which is where the pelvis is down. Most people with interior pelvic tilt are athletic people either an athlete or someone that's in the gym and they get the lordosis in the back and their mm -hmm. butt sticks out. Right. You ever see, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you see some 25 year old kid who's he's cut up, he's shredded. He looks great in a t-shirt. Right. But his butt is sticking out. Mm -hmm. Right. That's interior pelvic tilt oh, so that, yeah. where the spine is, is curved. So it's like, yeah, you're diesel, you're shredded, but your butt is sticking out and you're, and then you, you know, you get, you get the waddle walk because yep. now the hips are too tight and it's torquing your femurs out. As far as the, the hip or shoulder elevation, they typically mm -hmm. go together. That's, um, I mean, that can pretty much happen to anybody just from being in awkward postures, awkward positions and the body just, it just goes, oh, okay, this is our new normal. And then it just locks in muscle memory. Yeah, because the muscles lock it in. Sure, sure. Yeah. Like I, you know, I, I noticed lots of issues with me you know, when I started going through this process and it all came back to this computer setup, mm -hmm. you know, and the mouse, the mouse, I'm right-handed. So the mouse going like this, right? You're constantly moving your arm like this, doing the mousing. Right, and that, that there's your shoulder, right? I yeah. have a cousin, shout out to Adam, wherever he is. His uh, medical monopoly doctors say he needs rotator cuff surgery. He's a mailman. So he's oh. constantly going like this, constant mail. Now, when you think of rotator cuff surgery, you think of like a tennis player or something. Right, an athlete for sure, baseball. He, he's delivering mail, but look at the motion. Right. Look at the motion all the time. It's like this. Yes. Because there's muscle dysfunction and his muscles are weak, not to mention nutritional deficiency because you need to feed those muscles, that soft tissue. Interesting. Then you know, things my, happen. My brother had to have a hip replacement because he was a waiter, mm -hmm. but he was carrying these big trays on the same side yep. all the time. And eventually... It, uh, yeah. So I think it's important that we, we let, you know, tell people, look at your occupation, yep. look at these things. Like as a mailman, you would never, you know, yep. look at these motions and, and, coach, and different things. Coach rain says it all the time when we're doing P rays, when we're recording the P ray, she says, she asks me all the time, what does this person do for work? Most of the time? I don't, I don't know. Cause we're maybe just, that's something okay. to start asking. Well, we do ask once they become a client, but right. in the, the process of providing people free value, you know, sometimes there's not enough time, but you know, it, it does matter. Like yeah. masseuses are all messed up, which is oh, ironic. Yeah, right. Makes sense. Cause they're it's ironic. Hunched. Yeah. They're hunched and they're, you know, they got to have strong hands and their shoulders end up like this, just like a computer athlete, right. computer athletes and masseuses are very similar. Also, masseuses are typically on one leg. They're using that one leg oh. as their pivot. It's very interesting. Posture, musculoskeletal system is the missing link 
to the whole thing. I agree. That brings us right back to our original discussion. Yeah, I agree. You know, I just from this conversation, it made me realize a lot of things like even a guitar player, you know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they don't realize that. And, and all it takes, you know, no, nobody's saying stop playing the guitar, but maybe change the way you do it and also add some exercises, postural exercises mm -hmm. in to get it straightened out. And wow, it, it, that's amazing how just your occupation or even a hobby that you have mm -hmm. can affect your your posture and the way your body works. Very, very cool. I, I think that's a lot. Yeah. Of and a lot of moms who are carrying the kid on one arm. Backpacks. Backpacks. Kids in school with backpacks. It just, it just happened to my dad. Let me share a story real quick. So my dad's posture wasn't good to begin with, but mm -hmm. you know, he recently had to go on permanent oxygen. And you know, because he was just going to dialysis and all that, the medical monopoly sent nurses and physical therapists to the house for six weeks. Okay. Let me tell you something. He's worse now than he was six weeks ago. They were putting him through physical therapy. They were putting him through physical therapy, but they never told him how to wear the oxygen. Because it's kind of like a, a purse. In a yeah, way. yeah, it is. It's I've like a satchel. It. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling my dad, and you didn't listen to me. I said, Dad, don't wear the satchel. You're going to hurt yourself. And just as sure as the grass is green, Joe, he's bent over like a 90 year old old man now. Right. Like this. And that does not help his kidneys. That doesn't help that does, his other issues. Doesn't help his lungs. He's hurt his lungs. Right. Because he didn't listen. Now, has he listened? Now he realizes he's messed up. He can't even stand up straight. And that's the muscles. Because he's nutrient deficient. He's, he has muscle dysfunction. His body can't handle that distribution of weight. Yeah. So he's ba he was basically for six weeks walking around like this because the oxygen thing is bringing him down. Now his body's like this. He's like this. Yeah. Literally walking around like he's looking for pennies on the floor, just hunched over, totally kyphotic. And he loved the physical therapist. He was a nice guy with a nice personality. Oh, okay. And I said, Dad, you're worse now. Then when were. the guy started, that's a fact. Yeah. The medical monopoly strikes again. Yep. As usual. Because they so. have no clue. They have no clue about this human body. All they do is they come, they do their little one, two dance and they leave and they leave you stranded on an island. And that's what I they agree. do. I agree. I totally agree. All right. This is an interesting question. You'll have to explain it to me, Kevin. This is from Common from Vasu on IG. I love the Batman and joke video you posted months ago. Please post again. What is that about, Kevin? <laughs> oh, no, I talk about Joker and Batman all the time that right. I don't want to be like Batman because Batman is a coward. He's hiding. You know, he's depressed. He's not his authentic self, but the Joker's free. Joker's wow. free as a bird. The Joker is accepting of everything. And, you know, so I, I like to use that analogy a lot. And I tell people I'm more Joker than Batman. So, you know. Yeah, well, there, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, you know, there has always been this debate of who's the real hero. Who yeah, does Batman jo fight for? Yeah, you know, it's a metaphor. It's just a metaphor, but yeah, you know, I, I did a speaking gig a few months ago and the dude afterwards was like, yeah, dude, you got like this evil laugh, like you, this mischievous mm -hmm. laugh. And then and they're like, you're always giggling after you drop bad news. <laughs> or drop a, drop a bomb on them. Right. You drop some, 
you drop some medical monopoly bad news and then you giggle right. and laugh. And I'm like, you know, that's because I'm more Joker than Batman. That's right. You're right. Just I'm, remember. I'm definitely, you know, the smiling, mischievous type. I'm not, not, not the hero, man. I'm not saving you off a burning building and then well, hiding like Batman. Is Batman no. really the hero? Who does he work for? He works for the cops. He protects the establishment. He protects the authorities. Who does the Joker fight for? The people. Yeah. He fights for the people. And that's always the, been the whole dichotomy. And of Batman course, it really is the establishment. And of course, it's, it is a sci fi thing. So there is killing. So there's that whole psych, psychopath aspect. But I never analyzed. And it'd be interesting to look to see if the Joker kills innocent people or just bad innocent. people. Yeah. Or, or just bad people. Yeah. That's true. All right. Well, but the, the movie Joker is a very important movie. It's dark with Joaquin Phoenix. It's dark, mm -hmm. but you will see the evolution of a man who stops giving a crap. Right. And I respect someone that stops giving a crap more than someone that's hiding. Someone who, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree with you on that. All right. We got one more question. And this is a big one. I mean, it's going to cause a little controversy. Can schizophrenia mm. be reversed with nutrition? And they comment that it doesn't seem possible. Oh. So that's now schizophrenia is one thing we have never really touched on. We've touched on depression. We've touched on PTSD. We've touched on anxiety. We've never really talked about this. And this is a big one that people, a lot of people get diagnosed with. What are you thinking? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's in fact, if you if somebody Google's uh pellagra, that's another disorder that is very similar. And you know, that's been you know, that's been reversed with nutrition. We, you know, schizophrenia is typically a niacin deficiency. It's typically a tryptophan deficiency. You're going to have a lot of minerals deficient there. And then on top of it, you can have a blood sugar disorder. You know, we talked about that a few episodes ago. If you got sugar running through your blood, you know, so it, it's, it could be a few things, but it absolutely can be corrected. There's nothing that can't be corrected besides birth defects. And nobody's born schizophrenic. Right. Right. Nobody's born schizophrenic. It's not like Down syndrome or cleft palate. So it's absolutely nutritional. It's chemically imbalanced. Caused by a nutritional. Absolutely. Deficiency. Absolutely. And then you got the whole mindfulness thing on top of it. Well, yeah, that's the problem. Once, you know, you and let I your have, imagination take control. Yeah. Well, that's it. I, you know, I had this in my family. I have a nephew of mine who has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. And, you know, they, he goes on and off the drugs. He's just like any, anybody else. You know, they prescribe him drugs. He feels good. He goes off for a little while, then he feels bad. Um, but I've never broached the subject with him, but, it's something that to me is very hard to understand and comprehend. Yeah. The B, the B vitamins are huge for, for brain right. health. Huge. And so niacin, niacin, tryptophan, you know, and, and the hard part is, you know, if the medical monopoly knew what they were doing or they really cared about you, they would run labs. Mm -hmm. And that's my thing is put your money where your mouth is. So let's just say that your nephew, you said your nephew, right? Yeah. Let's just say him and his parents saw this mm -hmm. recording and they right. said, no way that's BS. Then I would say, okay, do you have an extra grand? Cause we can run labs right now. Right. 
and just run the labs. Put your money where your mouth is. Run the labs. Stop acting like the medical monopoly has the answers because unless it's an emergency, they don't. Well, here's my thing, all right? They call it a chemical imbalance, right? Do they check the chemicals? No. Nope. Do they ever check the chemicals? And then tell me, what chemicals are they? Can yeah. you name these chemicals right. that are in balance? Right. I mean, and, and if they knew really how the body worked, and how do you think those chemicals are generated and created? Right. They're created through nutrition. They're created through your system. It's just, you know, like you were saying how everything, um, what were you saying? Everything metabolizes into glucose, right? right? So you need, you know, it's the same thing. Your, your, what you intake into your body is the thing that creates those chemicals in your, in, in the brain. Do you know what I mean? It's because, and, and like you're saying, the reason those it's not in balance is because you're vitamin B deficient or because like you said, niacin, you know, there are certain things that you need to make that balance. And that's what they don't get. You don't just throw another chemical because that's really what they're giving you, right? It's chemicals. They never give you anything natural because you can't patent. You can't patent a natural thing. That's always been the thing with cannabis that I've always said, you know, they, and they still have never been able to create artificial, uh, a, a, a chemical cannabis yet. That's right. Because they can't patent it. That's right. They cannot patent it. And that's, that's right. why they want everything to be chemical created in the lab because they own it. Yep. I don't know what they give people for schizophrenia. I don't well, butrin, or they have a bunch of different drugs, but that's not natural. You can't, you know, that is something that somebody created in the lab. And then of course they got to get off the poor four foods. They got to get on a, um, yeah, you know, we have, we have diet protocols that go with the supplement protocols, you know? So I would say a brain brain protocol diet, and then with the proper, you know, supplements, you know, you, I mean, you could see results on schizophrenia in six weeks. Easy. And, and I think with schizophrenia, especially if someone's Look at been, scurvy. Right. Look at scurvy. Scurvy and, was a big deal. And now it's, it, it was a vitamin C deficiency. Right. Right. And how, yeah. how upsetting is that? That people have to suffer because of one deficiency. Right. It's utterly ridiculous. No, and, and, and so many things are caused by a vitamin or a mineral deficiency, you know? But, you know, I tell you, it changed when, they, I, when Big Pharma and when the medical monopoly was established because it became about owning and patenting. I mean, if you know anything about the U.S. pharmacopoeia before pre the 1920s and 30s, the only thing on there was natural medicines, dude. That was the only thing on there. That was the only thing we had. Doctors used to prescribe cannabis, you know, tincture, hemp tincture. They used to prescribe beet juice. You know what I mean? They used to prescribe, you know, when you had an iron deficiency, they, these were things that your doctor would say to you to take castor oil, right? right when you, right. you know, things like that. And now it's like, if it can't be patented, we don't want to, we don't want to recommend it. If we can't own it, we don't want nothing to do with it. And that's really scary. Yeah. It's really scary that we've been taken over like that, but guess what? We are about out of time. So uh, any last words for the, for our listeners? Well, one, I don't think the medical monopoly will get away with it much longer. Maybe 15 years max. The internet is too strong. Mm -hmm. and two, November 5th, I will be live in Farmington, Connecticut at the Bridge Healing and Arts Center, 2 p.m. We are making food poor for free. So come on by and, you know, if you have symptoms, let me know. Let's talk about it live. Let's get to the root causes and then let's eat. 
and we will be uh, we will be sharing that on video once uh, once that happens. So very good. And you can find out more about that at peaceoverpain.com or in the Facebook group. Just want to remind people before we go to like, share, and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. You can follow Dr. Reese personally. You can follow the Peace Over Pain Clinic. Uh, and uh, just please make sure you get plugged into what we're doing here. And if you haven't gotten your copy of the book yet, go out and get it. All right. We will see you all next week. Uh, and I will talk to you then. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.